Hi guys, in today's video, I'll be talking about vehicle classification according to body styles or body types. We have different types of models, you know, a whole lot of models, shapes, sizes, styles and designs used to model cars. And all these shapes, sizes, designs and all that have their own functions or have their own use. So in this video, I'll be explaining some of the most common body styles. This will also help us when we're trying to explain certain cars to people. Take for instance, some models have probably like four different body styles. Take like the um, BMW E90, the E90, the E91, the E92, and the E93. So if you get that generation 3 series and tell your friend, I got a 3 series, the friend might think, oh, you got the um, sedan 3 series. And when he sees that, oh, you got the convertible, he'll be like, you don't mean you got the 3 series. And he'll be like, yes, this is a 3 series, blah, blah, blah. All this will just be able to help us understand these car models better. So fast forward, when you see a car for the first time, what you notice is its appearance, you know, its body, the way it looks, the size, the height, and things like that, the number of doors. So that is what, or those are the foundations in which body vehicle classification according to body styles are gotten from. So I'll be starting with the most common one, which is the sedan or saloon, depending on your region. I always keep saying this because different people call it different things. So yeah, I'm starting with the sedan or saloon. This is the most common vehicle body style, you know, and um, it is a three box system. You know, the first box, the engine compartment, the second box for the passengers and the third box for the trunk or storage cargo space at the back. A separate trunk, you know. So cars like the Toyota Camry, Honda Accord, Toyota Corolla, Mercedes S-Class, um, BMW 3 Series, they are all sedans typically four doors and a trunk and the bonnet simple and they also have a fixed roof you know the roof is fixed it cannot be taken off and sedans can comfortably seat four or five people the next body style i'm talking about is the coupe or coupe depending on your region i think the americans call it coupe and the europeans call it coupe this body style also has a three box configuration you know the engine compartment the passenger compartment and the separate trunk or storage or cargo compartment normally traditionally coupes have two doors you know but over time a lot has evolved and now we, we now have four door coupes we even have suvs that are coupes or should i say crossovers that are coupes but thanks to mercedes-benz bmw and, and volkswagen for giving us the cls it's the cle the four series grand coupe the six series grand coupe even the um, volkswagen um, cc they are all four door coupes they have four doors, but they are rare. It has the slopey shape. <laughs> like the BMW X6, the Mercedes-Benz GLE Coupe, GLE, GLC Coupe as well. Even the X4 from BMW. So now, the definition of Coupe is more like comfort for the two front passengers. So, the two people sitting in front will sit comfortably, no problem. But the rest at the back, even if it's a four-door or it's a two-door, they don't really have that much comfort, especially when they are tall. Like the GLE Coupe, if you are tall instead of the back, it's sloping roof. Could be touching your head so coupes normally have a sporty look and a slopey roof line they look really lovely i actually love the gle coupe and the bmw x6 i love those cars next i'm talking about the convertible or cabriolet so these are cars with a removable or foldable roof the roof could be made of fabric metal whatever but it can be taken off you know it can be dropped into the trunk or removed and so, so that the passengers would actually um, be exposed to the atmosphere or exposed to the, to the weather you know <laughs> so if it rains and you cannot bring up your top you get drenched or wet so we also have what they call road stars in the past road stars were vehicles without any form of weather protection like without any roof on them so if it rains you get drenched there is no form of covering but in over time i think manufacturers have seen that this is a bit too dangerous so they're now giving road stars the ability to, to be convertible. So road stars now are convertible, but they still lay emphasis on the sporty look. You know, even road stars back then were also very sporty. They paid a lot of attention to look sporty and have sporty characteristics. Road stars are also called spiders. You know, S P I D R or S P Y D R, depending on what the manufacturer wants to call it. Cars like this are like are the Mercedes Benz S L K, S L, Ferrari California Spider, and a couple of other models. Roadsters also have the three box configuration. So still under convertibles, we have what they call semi-convertibles. An example is the Londoley. The Londoley is a car 
which in which the pass the driver is covered. The driver has a roof over his head, but the passengers have the ability or opportunity to take off their roof if they choose to. So you know, the passengers could be exposed to the weather or to the atmosphere, but the drivers are covered. And even the London list still has a partitioning that can separate the passenger from the driver, you know, from like a glass shield that keeps the driver inside his own cocoon and allows the passenger or passengers to enjoy the atmosphere. Then we have um, Taga tops. Taga tops are also semi convertible. You know, you can take off the roof or retract it. You know, it could be taken off manually or, re or automatically, probably retracting into the engine or into the boot. But in Taga tops, the rear is fixed. It's just the roof that goes off. Porsche trademarked the name Targa Top. So other manufacturers cannot use the name Targa, but there are some Targas from other manufacturers. But Porsche has tried trademarked the name, so they are the only ones allowed to use the Targa name. The next vehicle I'm talking about is the hatchback. Now, this one is a two-box configuration kind of vehicle. You know, the engine compartment, then the passenger and cargo compartment are together. Here we don't have a long trunk, like a long boot, we don't have all that normally. Normally or traditionally, because now they've changed all these things now and we now have long booted um, hatchbacks, but I will explain that later. Hatchbacks got the name hatchback because of the hatch-like door at the rear. Yes, and also um, hatchbacks are called five-door cars or three-door cars, because the trunk is called a door. So in hatchbacks, the passengers and cargo space share the same box. Originally, hatchbacks were short, small, portable cars, like you know, the Golf is a hatchback, Ford Focus, and a couple of other lovely hatchbacks. But now we have full sized hatchbacks like the um, Kia Stinger, the Audi A7, it's also a hatchback. The way it opens up, it's also a hatchback. Yeah. Although the, those ones are called liftbacks, and liftbacks are a variation of the hatchback. <sighs> All these manufacturers and their different names so next i'm talking about the station wagon the station wagon is similar to the sedan so unlike the three box configuration in the sedan the station wagon is a two box configuration like the hatchback you know the engine compartment then the passenger and cargo share the same space but here the roof line is extended and the trunk is longer so the station wagon is like a hatchback but a longer version of the hatchback so a variation of the station wagon is the sporting brake this is like a station wagon and a coupe so now the cls that is a four-door coupe also has the sporting brake that is a station wagon coupe <laughs> the porsche panamera sport turismo and the ferrari ff they also fall under the sporting brake category so next i'll be talking about the pickup truck we know pickup trucks to be, have high ground clearance and they have an exposed embed at the rear to carry cargo pickup truck to pick things up in the truck most pickup trucks come in four wheel drive or rear wheel drive like the toyota hilux the toyota tundra the mercedes-benz x-class uh nissan novara and a couple of other vehicles but we also have the honda ridge line this is a pickup truck that comes in all wheel drive unlike the four wheel drive found in the rest <laughs> Although pickup trucks could also have two wheel drive, it could be front or rear. The bridge line, other option if it's not all wheel drive, will be the front wheel drive. And the high locks, other option if it's not four wheel drive, will be the rear wheel drive. Then next, we have the crossover. In all fairness, crossovers are simply smaller SUVs. We can actually say that crossovers are a subdivision of SUVs. That's why sometimes in some classifications they will call a crossover a crossover SUV. So now the thing is most SUVs or the first set of SUVs were made with body over frame chassis or body on frame chassis and the first crossovers and all crossovers are made with unibody chassis. Most of the SUVs now switch to unibody chassis but you know the SUVs are large, huge. Crossovers are like a smaller version of the SUV because not everyone wants a large vehicle but they would like to enjoy the high ground clearance, the high sitting position and the large space that comes with the crossover. So the crossovers were just like, you know, a way for customers or consumers to have a sedan, a station wagon, and an SUV all together, you know, with the ride height, the comfort of a, of a sedan, and the size of an SUV, but not necessarily a large SUV. The crossovers are a blend or mix of sedan, you know, they, they have a sedan feel when they, you know, comfortable sedan feel but they have higher ground clearance 
It said that the crossovers, you know, took over the station wagons. When people started buying station wagons because of the extra space, okay, with the higher ground clearance and you know, higher, larger size of the vehicle, people started tending to move towards the crossovers. So the crossovers are like a hybrid of the sedan, the station wagon, the SUV, all jam packed together to give us a comfortable ride. Most crossovers are all wheel drive. You know, they are not as off roady as SUVs. An example of the crossover is Toyota RAV4. This is the, uh, I think this is even the first crossover that we ever got, and now a lot of companies have jumped on it. We now have a lot of crossovers: the Honda CRV, the Mercedes GLC, the BMW X3, Kia Sportage, Hyundai Tucson, Geely Courier, and a host of other vehicles. And the last body shape or style I'm talking about today is the SUV. This is sport utility vehicles. These cars are more utilitarian than sporty. You know, they are big, they have serious ground clearance, and most of them come in four-wheel drive. Examples are the Range Rover, the Land Cruiser, Defender. So one reason why people like SUVs is they have, you know, they, like I said, they, they have high ground clearance, high ride heights, you know, you can look down on everyone else. They normally come in four-wheel drive, they are very powerful and have off-roading abilities. In the past, they were all made with body on frame, with the body on frame chassis. But now we have monocoque chassis SUVs. Even the Range Rover, the GLS, most of them are now going to unibody kind of chassis. And for some reasons, they are still very capable off road and all that. I hope this video was able to help you understand car classification according to their body style. So that you know, when you want to get a car, you know the kind of car you want from knowing the body style and the function of this car. Like you won't get a sporty coupe if you know you're going to be going on the site, you know, driving on the beach, driving on sand, mud, gravel because your car will get stuck. For such, you'll get a pickup truck or an SUV or a powerful all-wheel drive crossover, you know, for certain things like that. 